Um, so welcome to uh, this year's uh, edition of the live scoring session for Another World Career Club. Um, thanks again for making time midweek to jump online um, and, um, and learn a bit more about um, how to do the live scoring. Um, so tonight I'll probably throw to um, to Patty Mitchell a little bit. Uh, he's uh, kind of the guru around um, live scoring um, and, um, and Glenn Mackey from time to time. So um, I'm going to attempt to share the screen with uh, with the iPad here and um, uh, and just show you, kind of take you through step by step what's uh, what's involved in in the live scoring, um, which will be a part of um, of every junior game. So all home um, home teams are expected to live score. Um, we have iPads available at the club, uh, so you don't have to use your own device. Um, and um, we've uh, yeah we've invested in uh, in some iPads so that to make life easier for everyone. Um, but um, tonight we're going to go through. As I said, step by step guide, a little bit of information, maybe uh, a few uh, scenarios that you, you may come across in, in junior cricket um, over the season. Um, obviously, we cover everything. Um, and you'll generally have, if you don't have someone around who's got a bit of experience with this, you can always, uh, you can always reach out to me, give me a call if, you, if you're really stuck. At the end of the day, there's always someone who's scoring on the sheet next to you um, generally the away team will be on on a on a score sheet so um, don't stress too much if you don't get all of the detail so um so i am going to share my screen with you all so this is the um this is the second time we've run this session um we we did this last year, um, and I, th I hope uh, it was helpful for for parents um, who we we kind of um, we really encourage you all to, to have a go at this. Um, it really helps the team manager and the uh, team team manager and the coaches. Um, you know, if you if the parents take on some of the load around, uh, particularly around scoring. Um, and yeah, the team manager has been asked kind of to, you know, set up rosters and that kind of thing so that so everyone gets an opportunity to do it. And you feel, and you know, you do it a couple of times and you'll feel more confident um, moving forward, I'm sure. In the end, the live scoring is actually a lot more intuitive than scoring uh, physically on a, on a score sheet. Um, there's fewer things you have to think about, to be honest. Um, and it is... As I said, quite intuitive. So it takes you through, um, you know, ball by ball, what it is that has just happened. So um, hopefully that will, um, and by the end of this session, hopefully you will kind of feel a bit more um, confident about being able to do it in a, in a game on a game day. So as I said, we've got um, iPads and tablets. So we've got three iPads and three tablets. Most of the time, we don't won't need any more than three. We've with only the three games in, in action um, for our home ground. Um, they're stored in the cupboard, which is just inside the um, right-hand side of the front door of the club rooms. Um, so they're always on charge there. So um, when you pick one of those up, um, you if you uh, before the game, then we just ask that you return them to the same spot and put them back on charge so that they're always charged for, for a game. Um, you can get through a whole game with with 100 charge, but you might struggle with, uh, yeah, with a with a half charged uh, iPad. Um, so I won't go through these step by step right right now. This, um, but I'm going to share these slides with everyone after the session. Um, but essentially, on the right here is what you'll see when you first um, log in uh, or open the My Cricket Live Score app. Um, for those who have downloaded it to your device, you would, would see this screen. Um, <clears throat> we have a generic username and password or, or microbit ID and password. You see it there on the left. Uh, so it's NCC scorer and then the password NCC scorer one um, with the NCC in uppercase. Um, what we do ask is that, um, so 
the iPads are all locked. And so the, the code to get into that is 1927. So that's the um, year of establishment of the club. Um, and then we, we ask that you connect the um, iPad to a Wi-Fi hotspot. So uh, most smartphones, you can, um, you can hotspot your Wi-Fi um, and, and connect, um, connect up so that you can open the app. Um, and then you follow these steps essentially. Um, and I'll take you through that um, shortly. So I won't, as I said, I won't go through this in detail now share these slides with you later. Um, so this is again, something that you can refer to. I'm probably gonna have printed versions of these um, with the iPad. Um, it's essentially, it's a bit of a cheat sheet for all the different uh, stages and ages and age groups um, and what the different settings are that you need to set up at the start of each session um, before you start live scoring. The, these settings just make your life so much easier. Essentially, it, um, again, it, it then prompts you once you get to a certain point, um, you know, around, for example, maximum overs, you know, that each bowler can bowl, uh, maximum balls that each batter can face, et cetera. Um, and it'll prompt you once you get to that stage. Um, in all of our junior cricket, we have a maximum of six overs, uh, six balls per over. Um, it doesn't matter how many of those are uh, extras. Um, that's it's just six balls and that's it. Um, so uh, some of these things are the same for all, to all, all, for all juniors. Okay. Um, and you'll see, but there are some differences as you move move through um, the age group, such as the number of balls that are batter can face, etc. Um, at the top of the screen here, hopefully you can see it. I can't see it. Um, it's been uh, covered by by the settings, but um, there's a couple of YouTube videos here. Again, you can have a look at those in your own uh, your own time. Um, Patty just shared those with me uh, yesterday. Some really good, um, again, step by step kind of videos that takes you through a um, how to how to do all of your match settings, selecting teams, etc. Um, so. Have a bit of a squeeze at those as well in in um in your own time um one of them i think goes for about 40 minutes but you can obviously skip through if you're um if you're wanting to get certain parts of the of the uh live score settings um there's a busy slide but it's essentially just um taking the rule summary um from for this this season um this will help you a little bit with the live scoring as well. So if you if you forget or don't have don't have that cheat sheet handy, this one also um, is helpful um, to set some of those um, limits, such as you know uh, how many balls a bowler a batter can face, how many overs a bowler can bowl, etc. Um, the next page just shows you then um, some of the other other bits the some of the fielding restrictions, etc., cetera, um, the size of the, the different cricket balls that we use. But also really importantly, I, I think I take this for granted sometimes having grown up playing cricket, um, that sometimes these, uh, these signals are a little bit foreign to some people. Um, so that's why they put this on, the, um, on this kind of this rules summary. Um, just so you know what it what it means for um, when umpires signal, because um, you're a long way from the field, obviously from the umpire, um, so you need to understand what these signals are. I mean, some of them are pretty clear and and pretty uh, well known, but there's others that um, you might see and you go, oh, I have no idea what that means, right? So, um, so this is kind of handy having this if you're not familiar with uh, uh, with what. What the signals are and the last one is also in, more important for if you're doing um, manual scoring right so you know things like a dot dot ball what does a dot ball mean it just essentially means that the no run runs are scored off a ball um and then you have you know things like when you lose a wicket in the in the physical um score sheet you would put an x um you know things like no balls wides how do we do those these are the suggested 
uh, symbols again that you put in the scorebook, um, you know, and and you can have a look at that. You can again, I'll be sticking in a uh, a copy of this in the back of each of the scorebooks, the physical scorebooks as well. So, um, so that is um just a few slides to share with you to start. Um, what I wanted to do now is hopefully um, be able to connect up and run through what it looks like to get into the app. Um, just going to try to mirror the screen here. Um, okay. Can everyone see that? Where the phone? Where the phone? I didn't do it. Can you see it? No, no, no. The... Yeah, you can see that. All good. Yes, you can see the my cricket live score screen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so you'll see here. So, I've essentially gone into the my cricket uh, live score app um, on the iPad, and. Uh, I can work out my daughter's iPad. Um, so essentially, the the uh, My Cricket Live Score app is this one down the bottom here. Uh, when you go in, you'll get a, the ID and password prompt. Um, I think in most cases, after round one, they'll be kind of pre-filled anyway. But um, but essentially, you would then do the NCC scorer and then capital NCC scorer one for the password. Um, and then that logs in. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So here, um, so this will be the first thing you see is you select the grade. Um, clearly, that doesn't have all the grades there. So all it has at the moment, actually, the first, the top three senior grades um, who actually have a fixture um, already. So none of the junior fixtures are, are set yet. So I can't select any of those, um, but for the case of tonight, we'll, um, we we could select one of these grades. But what we'll do is, um, if uh, let me show you. So if we did, if we went to one of these, then you on the left hand panel here, you would um, you would see, um, yeah yeah, you would see the matches come up, and you would click on one of those matches um, and you'll see uh, that you can, if you click on it, you can download it. And so I think Patty last year you suggested that the best way is to download the match first, uh, just to make sure if you lose internet connection, it doesn't stuff up the kind of live scoring. Is that that's still the best advice? Assume that's a yes, Patty. Uh, that's a yes. <laughs> um, so um, yeah. So what will happen if if you then download um, the match, it'll move to this uh, to the second column, downloaded matches, and then you click on that, and you start start the match. Right. Um, what I'm going to do is do a demo match, and um, in this case, it brings up it brings up this first screen, and that's what will happen when you say start match for any of the for for your matches. Um, <clears throat> so these these are the settings that, that come up, and um, and they match match those uh, that cheat sheet that I showed you before. So there's a whole whole range of settings here. It can be look a bit daunting to start with, um, but essentially most of these should be should be uh, pre-selected based on the age or the grade that's been selected. It's not always the case, so you do need to check them. Um, so the, when I go through here, I, I want to set this up for a, for a junior match. Um, let's, uh, and in this case, I might, I might set it up for a, um, a Super 7 match. It was 12s, Blue, because you did 12 last year. Oh, 12s, you want 12s? Okay, we can do 12s. Um, and so 
I'll set that up for, for 12. So essentially as I work down the screen, um, you want the in our app help all the time. You don't want the confirmed balls because that's a bit annoying. Um, we don't need to record batting minutes. That's a bit of overkill for junior cricket. Um, I always select show full player names. Reasoning Reason being is otherwise I think it just gives you a first initial and surname and there can and that can be a bit confusing. I prefer to have first and last name up there. I agree with that. Make sure you put full names, especially if there's brothers or siblings with the same yep. initials. Yep, which you know, which does happen quite a bit, particularly in juniors. So, um, so show full player names. I turn the wagon wheel off because again, that's annoying because essentially then you have to choose where the ball's been hit every time. That's what a wagon wheel means. It just shows you where. It, like where all the shots have gone on the oval you don't need that so um as i move down <clears throat> overs per innings so under 12s and like all the friday night games will be 25 overs 25 overs per innings so an innings means obviously when one team bats and then the other team come in and also face 25 overs um Super over is not relevant. Maximum overs per bowler. So here this is also important to select because then you'll get the prompt when someone's bowled them their um, complement. So in this case, 12s is four, three, three overs per bowler. Um, balls per over is uh, six. So we keep that as six. Um, wide value stays at one, so you get a run for every wide that's bowled and a no ball. Um, you get also a run. You don't re bowl the no balls, so you turn that off and you don't re bowl the wides because remembering it's six balls and that's it, no matter whether you've bowled six no balls or six wides in the over, that the extras do not mean an extra ball. Just gives you a run, but no, but that basically just ensures that we can get through the night before it gets dark. Um, the maximum balls per batter for twenty for um, under twelves is twenty balls. So again, you'll get prompted, which is really helpful. It's not always easy to keep a track of this whilst you try and do everything else. You get prompted when that. Um, batter reaches 20 balls. There's no maximum runs per batter. Um, once 20 balls is up, they get, they retire. Uh, maximum balls per over also needs to be, that needs to be set at six, because that's maximum. Um, uh, we, yeah, don't allow last man standing. That means essentially that someone can bat even after you've lost all your uh all your wickets uh and we won't worry about multiple dismissals um because this is under 12s everything from fast nines and up essentially is once you're out you're out um so it's a bit different with the super sevens which is the stage one teams um but essentially i think this is all the settings then for 12s then I'll go to team selection. So in this is this is the demo, obviously. So super at Sydney Sixers versus the Stars. Um, if you, <clears throat> all right. So here, if you wanted to check who it is has been selected. So all teams will be selected. Um, the previously all, all all the names we put into the into the team sheets, and so. The coaches will let me know, coach or team manager will let me know that, you know, that their teams um, and essentially will carry that over week to week. And um, But sometimes there might be kids that are away, sick, whatever it might be. Um, and so here, this is where you can go in and um, you can set set a player as a captain, wicket keeper, whatever, but you can also remove that player. Um, so that second last option there. 
So if they're not playing that game, best to remove them. Um, and, but you can check here. Oh, yep. All these kids are here. All good. That team looks fine. Or you could say, ah, oh, but hang on. Um, you know, Billy Smith isn't on there. So what you can do, and I'm not sure whether I can hear because it's the demo. Can I add a new, I don't know if I can add a new one to this one. No, not on this, not on this demo. No, not on the no, demo. No. Yeah, but there's an option to add a player and I'll show you that maybe after this, after the demo, I'll we'll go into a proper team. Um, yeah, you can add a player. And so essentially all, all then all junior players on in that club will, will come up on the list um, and you select that player. Or if it happens to be a player who's come along and it's their first game, they haven't registered or whatever, you can just add their name manually. Um, so so this is where you edit edit the team selection, the team selected and playing. Um, so once that's done, you can go to match setup. Louis. Yes, Max. Max. Can I just jump in here that yes. it's important? It's important in the team setups to have the opposition scorer, you know, fifteen minutes before the game starts, to make sure that their team is in, because we don't control the opposition team. So if you do have to select their team, you need to allow yourself enough time to do that yeah. before the match starts. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Um, yeah. We sometimes assume that uh, everyone's as organised as we are, but it's not always the case. So we'll, um, yeah, we that's why we kind of do do all of this and uh, try and try and do it a bit ahead of the start of the game. Um, so you're not stressed about it, you know, but but you shouldn't shouldn't uh, you shouldn't start or the umpire shouldn't start the coach shouldn't start until you're ready um, to start scoring. So, um, all right. So this is where you where they after the, they have the toss they work out who's won the toss and whether they've elected to bat or bowl. And so what you then do once you press done, it'll go to start scoring and we want to do this by ball by ball okay so we score ball by ball and again it, it takes you through this it takes you through it step by step okay so you can't you can't forget to select who the batters are because it asks you straight away who's the strike batter strike batter means who's facing the first ball so um, so you would choose the strike batter you would go next, the non-strike batter, next, and the bowler, okay? So then, again, if you're, you should have, what you should ask the coach for is a, is a team list. Hopefully, there's a batting list. There's not always a bowling list. It's not always the case, but um, ideally, if you've got a batting list, that really helps. Um, but then you've got to get the bowler as well so that bowler you would put in. And so this is your, this is now your home screen. Okay, so um, what your, uh, what what you're doing now is, um, sorry, what you see now is the screen you'll see for the whole match essentially. Okay, so this is your working screen. Um, so you have a, um, a number of things that that you can keep a track of all right so you've got on the left hand side you've obviously got uh who's who's batting melbourne stars are batting the, you've got your progressive uh cumulative score you've got um your two batters the one in blue is the one who's on facing or on strike the white is non non-striker and the bowler is selected here so we would what you do then is work through and over and so um you've got your controls down the bottom left of the screen so uh hazelwood's bowling and, and bowled a dot ball to start so i've selected that and you'll see here it's come up on the right hand side of the screen as well it's a real really important that you check that that went and is registered as a ball okay so 
and this is a good i mean also the often sometimes the umpire slash coach loses a track of how many balls have been bowled in the over you you as the live scorer essentially has you know has the definitive kind of um record of how many balls have been bowled etc so they might call out to you you know oh, how many balls is that and you say five one to go or if you get to six then you need to kind of yell out to the umpire over you know over next bowler kind of thing right so you get so the single was scored so stoin has scored a single and you'll see here that uh, it automatically the app automatically changed the strike because it was one run so now there's a new batter on strike madison on strike right so then you you would go through score another two madison's still on strike he gets a six he's still on strike and then uh the umpire says he scores a four but actually no it didn't reach the boundary he thought it was a four it wasn't a four it was actually three right you go ah damn okay i've got a four in there what do i do now so your your um favorite your best friend is the blue uh return button which is that that uh, one on the on the top top row of your your commands. Um, so you see, it got rid of that last ball, and you can put your three in. Okay, so not always lost if you made it made a mistake. If you actually made a uh, mistake for the whole over, you missed a ball or something, you can go all the way back, keep pressing return, return, and actually there was a single off the first ball. I missed that one. I was asleep and uh and then you can go back to you know getting back into the groove if by any chance you get the wrong bowler you can always click on those three dots next to the bowler and actually change that bowler's name okay it wasn't hazelwood it was um enriquez right so you want to change the bowler for the entire over because it actually was Moses, not uh, not Josh Hazelwood, that bowled this over. So, so you'll see it, see it automatically changes everything. It updates the the bowler for the whole over, right? Um, all right. So then, fifth ball, uh, he bowls a wide, and you'll see here when you click on wide, and then asks you to confirm that which is good, all the extras you need to confirm. Um, so you just tick, tick, yep, there was one wide. And then he bowled a no ball. Again, just overstepped, but no run was scored off that, right? So then all good, end of the over. Okay, so now it gives you a summary, which is kind of nice too. That also helps with the scorer next to you, who's doing ball by ball, but also over by over kind of scores on the scorebook so they can also say oh how many off the over and you can say there was eight off the over so you'll see here i'm not sure if you can see my cursor on the screen um but um moses by one over and it's uh no maidens eight runs no wickets okay so there's none for eight off one over so it's a, a nice little summary and then you go end over because there's six balls bowled, and there's only six balls ever bowled in junior cricket. And then you go to the next bowler, all right? So as you work through this, you know, the, 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 basic, the basic options are pretty straightforward, but then things get a little bit, might get a little bit tricky. Uh, you might get a no ball, and then the batsman scores a four off that ball. So the bowler stepped over the over the line. It's called an overall. The bat is hit four off the bat. Okay, so what do I do here? So no ball. Yes. But what you want to do is actually add four runs to that because there's also been four scored. So I've clicked on four, and you can now see it's no ball plus four runs. 
Okay, so five runs will actually go to the score, hopefully. When I click. That'll go to the batsman. Yeah. Or do you want four boys? So four will go to the batsman and one will go to the extras, hopefully. I will. Yeah. Okay, so five was added. Uh, yep, four went to the batter and one went into the extras um, just below the batter's names here under no, NB, no ball. Okay, so that's kind of one example where you, you'll, you'll get that from time to time. It might be that also someone, one of the uh, bowlers misses the pitch, that's a no ball, but you can still hit that, right? So that happens quite a bit in the younger ages. Um, or it might, bat, might bounce three or four times. The umpire calls a no, no ball, but the player is still able to hit it and gets runs, okay? So that's when you, yeah, you select no ball first because that's the first thing that happened. And then you add any runs that happen. You just had a question. A no ball with two boys. Yep. So I think it would be no ball. Yep. And then you would put in a buy. And then the two. And then a two. Yeah. Yep. So in that order. So, um, yeah. The, yeah. So again, that will be three to the score, um, one to the no balls, two to the buys, no, nothing to the batters. So, because they didn't hit it. Um, just, yeah. just on that, Louie, when, you, when you're adding extras, you'll see that. Well, the people will notice that there's a tick to confirm what happens after extras. That doesn't happen after scoring runs. Yeah. Yep. So this everything. One extra step. Yeah. One. Everything on that top row essentially is just an automatic. The dot dot and runs. It doesn't ask you to confirm, but all the extras it does. And then, um, all right. So then, uh, your... going back. To, sorry, going back to that two boys. Oh yeah. So scenario in a game last year where we had a, a an older scorer that uh, there was a no ball and it went for four four buys and they thought it went for five no balls right. so it was a bit of confusion you can't do it it goes in as four buys plus okay. a no ball now which got okay. changed I reckon about five or six years ago yep in the old days it used to go down as five no balls yeah now it goes down as one no ball and four buys so bad luck to the keeper yeah yeah. So it's just little things like that where you can get stuck. Yeah. So there was a match last year where we they got stuck and hang on, what's going on here? We can't do five uh, no balls. Cool. Thank you. I think it's important there to note that if when you're live scoring you do get stuck, just call out to the field umpire that you've got to sort out the scoring because if you let it go, it just gets. The games move so quickly in juniors that sometimes you just got to call out to the umpire, give us a minute to fix up the scores. Yep, absolutely. Um, because in the end, particularly if you're live scoring, this is this is the truth um, here. So, and it does make life easier. If live scoring is accurate, it means that there's less work to be done at the at the back end um, for the coaches or team managers so um all right so let's just see that uh uh let's see what happens when we get a wicket all right so uh Dorcius uh bowls to Madison who hits it out to me wicket and gets caught so click on wicket here I'll ask you a few questions right who's out Madison uh, how out, dismissal type, court, oh, I've got a message, um, court, done, um, fielder, if, if, you, if you can find out who the fielder is, that's great, um, otherwise at this stage don't stress too much, just select someone and, and ask you to... No, see. you just, yeah, don't even that, just press, let go Steve O'Keefe and just press done or cancel, don't even have to press it. You don't know it because you can go back and do it later. Oh, beautiful. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, and so, and then ask you crossed. Um, so, 
that might not be as intuitive to some people as others. Um, so crossed means did the did the batters cross whilst the ball was in the air essentially? Um, so at the time that the fielder caught that ball, had they already crossed over um, down the down the pitch? Um, that's important because that determines who's on strike when the new batter comes in, right? So if it gets caught on the boundary, often the batters have, have crossed. And so they therefore, the, the new batter comes into the non-striker's end, right? Because whoever's going out has already crossed and they're no longer on strike. Um, so you can select whether they crossed. In this case, they crossed, okay? So let's just see what happens. Shoot, oh yeah, so now I get asked with confirmation. Yes, we get caught, happy with that. Uh, brings Maxwell in, but he should be non-striker and that is the case because they crossed, okay? So the wickets come up as red on the right-hand side um, and the wickets been attributed to the bowler. Um, you, you, then, you then can continue the over as normal. Again, I'll give you a summary. So after two overs, the total cumulative score is one for 19. Uh, the bowler's figures will come up as one for nine off one over, right? And um, and, it, and it gives you a summary of, you know, how many extras have been, uh, there are, etc. okay? So all of that is helpful, particularly if you're double checking, which you should be doing at the end of every over, essentially. When you've got two scorers, you, you confirm with the other scorer, okay, end of over, scores on one for 19, uh, bowlers one for nine off, the, off one over. Um, and then if every, everyone's happy with that, then you end the over. Bluey, can, yep. can you just um, explain if, they, if the, the fielding and the batters have crossed is foreign to some people. If for whatever reason you you don't have the right batsman on strike, the, the three dot menu can change the strike. Yep. So you can change strike. Right. So if you got that wrong, or for whatever reason, sometimes particularly in the really younger juniors when you've got wickets, and sometimes sometimes in the super sevens you know after a wicket they change strike and they don't always and so you can just change the striker um quite easily just by by clicking clicking on the three dots and changing strike as well so um yeah so good point um then you've got so we've used okay so then we've done a wide um no ball with runs you know just just a just a buy was essentially where the batsman doesn't hit it and they they run and then um, uh, essentially the keeper's missed it or whatever. It's gone for what's called a buy. Um, you can again select how many they run on those buys. So if it was three buys, you just, it's just buy three. Um, and again, that, that won't go to the batter it gets attributed to uh, extras as a buy. Um, I just had a question. Yep. Question. Uh, could oh, yeah. you do a run out uh, with someone going for a second run, please? Sure. All right. So, um, yes, wicket. Go wicket first. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So, all right, let's just say Maxwell got run out coming back for a second. Oh, what do I do there? That's right. Run out. Fielder. Don't worry about it. Cancel it or you can throw it. No, so it was a direct hit. Uh, they crossed. No, they didn't because I'm going for a. This is where cross gets confusing to people yeah. who don't really know the game. So just yep. ignore that and when select the right batter when they're on strike. And then now press one. Yeah. So All that's right. right. 
So wicket wicket run out, but they scored a complete. They did a complete run and they got run out on the second, going for the second. Um, so that should add uh, a run to Maxwell, but then he'll be out. Should yep. be. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Bringing in a new batter. So. <laughs> Yeah. So one. But you can all. But you can all. You can change it if you hang on a minute. Oh shit! Hang. Um, Peter Hans comes on strike. That's easy. Just change the strike there and then. Yep. yep. Or you can go back and go. Oh, hang on a sec. Just reviewing that. They actually did two runs and then got run out on the third run. You can always just review it by clicking on the little pencil and um, editing. Uh, each ball, um, or you can go back and say, "Oh, yeah, no, the fielder wasn't okay. Oh, oh, it was Abbott, right?" And then you can go done. So again, oh, oops. Uh, so then it added another run because I put it. It was a, it was two runs going for the third. Uh, yeah. So, and you can go back here and double check again. The, the issue is if you go back and just and select something like I'm not sure how this works exactly, but if it was actually only one run back here, it, what it does it yeah so it changes obviously the strike, um, and so everything everything will change from that ball forward if it went from a one to a two or two to a one in this case, right? But you can change that. You can change, you can say yes, and you can update subsequent balls to reflect this for the entire innings. Yep. If you wish to update this wicket, uh, okay. Okay, right. So I knew they were the ones that went out, but we got it wrong down the track. And so what would have happened there, there would have been changes of strike that happened because of it being one rather than two. So and I, I suggest that if you're if you're new at scoring and something screws up completely, don't don't worry too much about it. Have the have the book and keep going as best you can. But at the end of the day, if if you if you start chasing your tail trying to edit things that you haven't necessarily done before. The, the blue arrow is your best friend to do it at the time. But if you find something out and over later, I, I wouldn't try and update it. Yeah. Well, and also just take a note of what, what happened so you know for next time. And then you can go through those YouTube, um, those ones on YouTube, the, the tutorials, yeah. and they're good. Um, so... <sighs> Uh, um, what am I? Also, those three buttons up the top, Louis, yep. in the top right. If someone wants to see the, someone wants to see the scorecard. There you go. View scorecard. There you go. So that's, and then someone goes, "Oh, Marcus Stoinis." Oh, that was uh, Bill, little Billy caught him. So you can push on the three dots, edit dismissal, and then you can find your fielder. There you go. Done. Yep, cool. Just and you can also, it. it's also good there because you can track the number of balls they faced here as well. So runs, balls. If you want fours and sixes, um, you can scroll down to the number of extras. So that includes your no balls, wides, buys, and leg buys. Uh, so leg buys obviously just means when it hits, hits the pad, it's your well, it doesn't hit your bat, but it hits some part of your body. Um, that's a leg buy, um, and they run. Um, and you've got yeah, you've got a running total here. Um, and you've got all your bowling figures, which you can also double check with your second scorer and fielding. Oh, so that's your catches and stuff. So 
Um, is, that, is, that, is that something where you would edit the scorecard once the innings finished, like in between innings before you finalise that innings? You can do. Yep. Not, yep. Not, well, you have the option. You can do it. Yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, Shanker, the, the plus sign, uh, I presume you mean at the top of the overs here. Um, you can insert a ball if you missed a ball, I think is what that, okay. if that's the one you mean. Um, yeah, that's the one. Yep. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, if you happen to miss a ball, you can just put in a single and then it will update automatically. You don't have to go through the process of, of um, doing all that. Um, yep. Yeah, good. We need to manage. Yeah, good. So if you want to manually update um, or retire a batter early, um, yep, you can do that. So all you do is select on the batter. So we want Zampa. We want to change the batter to the next batter. Then it'll ask you what are you do actually, why you're changing them. All right. So you can change. It could be an error. Again, you got the wrong batter. Like, but, but what you're actually doing, what you want to do is maybe retire, not out. So, again, this might, particularly in the younger grades, before under 12, so this is sevens and nines more often, um, you might decide that, you know, I've got 13 players and I want them all to face 12 balls today. So then you would force the retirement. So, But they're not, they're not out, so they're retiring, not out. Right? And so that, that batter can be selected again. So if then there's a wicket, um, right, what you should see, hopefully, is Zamba back in the list so you can choose them again. Yep. So, and how do you dismiss a batter when they hit their 20 balls? Okay, yep, good question, Tim. Um, so in this case, we, you won't, it just... won't work on this one because we didn't set a maximum number of balls. I think, in the setup. I, think I think I did. Didn't I? Thought I did. Oh, well, yeah, you, you, did. Did. you did. You put 20. Okay. So someone has to face 20 balls to make it up. <laughs> yeah. But you'll see that um, having. Uh, So there's a question there. Oh, yeah. Um, incorrectly recorded someone as out, but decided to change it later by going into manual scoreboard. It didn't work. And you can change the settings midway through the through the game too. Uh, we're nearly there. Sorry, just trying to. I wanted to do this kind of manually, like it's in a game. About the selected bowl has already reached. Okay, so this is one of the prompts. Okay, so this bowl has already reached their limits, which is good. That's why it's important to have the settings in there. Um, so, do you wish to select this bowler? No, because they've reached their limit, and they have a, <laughs> you seeing all those messages come up as well? Sorry, I should be able to close them, but can't. Um, yeah, so, all right, so Madison. So now we've reached the maximum number of balls, 20. Would you like to replace them with a new batter? Yes. So. Tim, what would happen in that in that case is that you're you're the one that's got that record of the number of balls. Generally, it's it's good to give give the umpire and the coach a bit of a heads up, a couple to go. Um, but but you then say that's twenty balls, new batter, kind of. Um, so on the on the score sheet, then you would say yes, okay, and then you put in your new batter. Um, it's easy as that. What happens then is 
they can come back. That that batter can come back at the end once all, all the other batters have, have had a hit. So, um, yeah. So, I so that answers that question. Um, so, did, uh, did we address that? The, the incorrectly recorded someone is there. Aiden. Um, the, can we, uh, yeah. Um, well, if you if you got the settings wrong, you can go in and change them with the three dots in the top right. You can go and change maximum balls now to five if you wanted to. Yeah. Scroll it down. I think you can go down. Maybe. Sorry, Blue. While you're there, maybe reduce the overs per inning so you can you can show what happens when we automatically reach the over count. Otherwise, you've got to fill in another seventeen overs. Now there's fourteen balls remaining. So this is the last over of the innings and it will then prompt. Yep. So end over. Yep. End of innings, compulsory close. So that's because we, yeah, we reset that. So that would be normally 25 overs for normal, for most juniors. But let's close the innings, yes. Right. So then, then down the bottom, it's got new innings. All right. So you would say, okay, same again. You click, you select your striker and non-striker batter and your bowler and go through the same process. Um, yep. So I think we address most of those questions. I'll stop the share and just... Um, See if there's any other questions anyone want to ask. Um, might be a bit, that might be hard to put in the chat. So, the last few minutes. Does anyone have any other burning questions or situations you come across and you're not quite sure how that what that would look like in the in the live score scenario? You said. It's kind of handy to just play around with this on your phone. Um, you know, download the app, have a bit of a play around, um, go through those scenarios, um, see what options there are in the sequence of, um, of you know, uh, of, of, uh, of options, particularly around extras and extra runs and that kind of thing, because it's actually a lot more common in juniors than it is in seniors. Um, having lots of extras and then and then additional runs. Um, there's a lot of things like you know the buys and you know extras when you have you know wides and it goes past the cast the keeper etc. So um, when, yeah, when, no, we so, the, when we use our the um, the club's iPads to yep. score, yep. we have to hotspot off our phone, don't we? Yep. 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 So that's the first thing to do when you when you unlock the iPad is is a hotspot to your Wi-Fi, um, and then you can you can download the match um, and then start scoring from there. So, yep. Um, so yeah, th those iPads are available in in the club rooms. So, um, and I'll make make it clear to the coaches and the team managers where they are, and then they'll uh, they'll grab those at the start of the game um, for the home. Home matches. Yeah, so hot swatting the the iPads to anyone's phone. It it's not intensive data usage, so that that shouldn't be an issue. Someone will have a phone there that you can hotspot to to get a connection. 
Yeah, just just a yeah, just a reminder that if you're hot spotted as someone who's a parent who happens to then leave, um, then this is the bonus of having the match. I think downloaded is the fact that you can continue scoring offline, or you can you can connect to someone else's hotspot and continue to score live. Um, and you know, so it's you know your your choice. But essentially, um, yeah, once you've got everything downloaded um, and started scoring, then then you you generally find um, you then if you're not live scoring, it's if it if it's not um, connected to the Wi-Fi and and and, um, and and live scoring, then it will ask for a sync to be synced to, you know, um, at the end of the the innings. So that's that's the other time that it's really important, obviously, to be connected because that'll then get uploaded to the to the system um, and will go on to my cricket. So. Um, you need the hotspot at least at the start if when you download the match and then when you're and at the end when you want to upload the, the scores to to my cricket. So they're the two critical points that you need the connection. Um, ideally the whole way through because then you also get other parents who can't make it for the night or whatever and they can they can physic they can track the, the score in real time um, live. So that that that's the that's the main reason for having this function is that people can track the game and track scores at other grounds and that kind of thing um or their their kids game even if they can't make it on the night so well, not, only, yeah. not only those who are not there but those who are there don't come yeah. up and pester the scorers because yeah, they can yeah. they can look it up themselves yep yeah. no good point um yep yeah. exactly right um if there were no other questions, I think we covered everything in the chat. Um, then it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, reaching out if you have any issues. Um, so we just used the book for away games, correct, Fee? Um, so, um, yep, so at this stage, it's just home, the home team that's responsible for doing the live scoring. Um, the away, away games are just in the book, so, yeah. And that's all. It's really important that there's always, at, at least until they iron out all of the issues, um, it, it's important that there's a there's a physical um, manual score sheet there, just in case anything goes terribly wrong with the live score. So you've always got a backup. Uh, no, so generally, generally, no. It's always handy to have the book there if you have it have a major issue with the app, but it's not it's not necessary to have a book, two books and a live score going. Um, you only need the live score on one book. So uh, I know that, yeah, but I mean, there's, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's, I think that there's less and less uh, examples of, of the live scoring not working. So I think it's, pretty safe to have just the one back up. Lovely. Thank you, Andrew. All, All right. I'll say is the three things, I'll make sure, yeah, the opposition sides in, make sure the settings are correct for the match. And if you've got any issues during the game, just write them down so you know we can ask someone later on. And those two tutorials uh, from Cricket New South Wales, Community Cricket is very good. And there's one from Community Junior Cricket, a stage one. Um, I watched them both at the start of the season. Just helps me. Yeah. Ben, got a question? Uh, yeah, Ben. Uh, no. Cool. Uh, yeah. So I, just, I put those links in the chat as well. Um, but I'll... I'll share those those slides with you. Um, as I said, there'll be a copy of the, the rules and the signals and stuff in the back of the, the physical scorebook. And that cheat sheet, probably I'll probably uh, print out and laminate or something and we'll, uh, we'll have that with the iPads. Um, but all of the password and login and everything is 
is stuck to the outside of the iPad there. So, um, so it's all very clear what needs to what you need to do to get in. So, cool. And so, I'll just add, Bluey, if for yeah. whatever reason something happens and and you can't fix it, don't worry too much about it. Revert to the book, write down. And it's not the end of the world if we can't get the live score because we can always fix it up at the end if we've got a score book that we can then copy from. Yeah, exactly. Whether it be take a photo of the score book and you know, let the coaches know so that we can fix it up afterwards. Yeah. I always take a photo of the opposition score book as well, just in case. That's just handy. Yeah. Probably, thank you, Bluey. Hold on. Cool. Thank you, guys. Um, yep. Yeah, thanks, Paddy, Max, and um, uh, and for everyone for yeah making the time on a Wednesday night. Um, good luck with it all. Um, and yeah, reach out if you if you have any dramas. Um, you know, you can always call me. Um, and um, we can talk you through it. So, thanks again, guys. See ya. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.